Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 91. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 9. Chapter 9, Hypothesis Testing. We're talking about Excel functions. We just got done talking about the norm S functions for hypothesis testing. Now we have to talk about the T functions. Now the T functions are because we're using the T distribution, and we're using the t distribution because standard deviation from the population is not known. Now we're going to look at three examples just like we did last video. We're going to see what to uh, what formulas and functions to use when we're doing a one tail test on the right or the upper end, what to do on one tail test on the lower end or the left, and finally what to do if we have a two tail test. Now the t inverse and t dist are similar to the earlier functions for norm, only in that the inverse does mean it's going to spit out our critical value. But instead of a z, it'll be a t. And the t dis, the dis part of it means it'll give us a probability, which we'll use for, for a p value. Now, the t functions. Uh, besides those two similarities, they're completely different. They're, they're different in how they function and at what we have to put in compared to our earlier functions. The first thing is it's only going to deal with the upper end. So the uh, t inverse will only spit out uh, critical values on the upper end. When we have to do a negative one, we'll have to use the t inverse and just put a minus in front of it. The t dist will uh, only spit out values on the upper end, regardless if it's a, a one tail or a two tail test. So on thing number one is that the t functions are only going to be dealing with the upper n. Uh, the other thing about the t inverse is the t inverse always calculates uh, for a two-tail test. So get this, if you have alpha equal 0 0.01 and you put it into the t inverse, it thinks you already divided by 2, right? Because it assumes that there's another little piece over here. So when we have a one-tail, we're actually going to have to multiply our alpha by 2. Uh, when we get down to the t dist, because it only deals with uh, values on the upper end, we're going to always have to put in a positive value there. Uh, this one need, then needs degrees of freedom and number of tails. Let's see how to use these. Whoops, I hit the wrong thing. Zip, scroll over. Here's our first example. This is for upper tail, one tail test. Critical value, we'll say equals t, that's for the t distribution, and inverse, that is for uh, getting a critical value. This is going to be a t, critical value. Probability, oh, this thing thinks it's doing two tail. We have alpha only for one tail, so we have to say this times two. And then we need our degrees of freedom. There is our critical value, our t. We compare it to the test statistic. And if we would come to the conclusion, because this is greater than this, we'd reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. If we're doing p-value, uh, we need to calculate it and then compare to our alpha. We're going to use t dist, so equals t dist. It wants our uh, x, or our t in our case. Here's our calculated test statistic. Remember, this function only deals on the upper end. We don't have any problem here, because this is on the upper end. And this is going to spit out the probability above this equal to or above that, degrees of freedom. And it asks for tails. The, the fact that it asks for tails, it's still going to spit out that little probability, but only on the upper end. We have a one tail here. So when we uh, enter that in and hit Enter, it'll calculate the proper p. 0 0.0017, that is less than our alpha. So we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. That's for the one tail on the upper end. Let's look at one tail on the lower end. Now, the only uh, thing about this is, since it only deals with the upper end, if we want a value here, we just have to run the t inverse and put a negative in front of it. If we're doing uh, the probability on the low end from whatever point to whatever t, we're actually going to have to do two different things, depending on is our value negative, which it's, which it's going to be most of the time. Remember, it doesn't ex ever allow you to put a uh, negative value in there. 
So we're going to have to trick it. We'll take our negative t and put a minus in front of it. And then because it's symmetric, it will give us probability on the upper end, but we'll know that that's also good for the, the lower end. Then if we happen to, which would be unusual, we had a value right here. Remember, since it only deals with the upper end, if we put in a t value right here, it would calculate this here. If you really want it from here down, you have to do 1 minus. Let's go do this example. I did the same thing again. I think I'm falling asleep here. All right, here's for the uh, one tail on the left or the lower end. Critical value equals t for the t distribution inverse because we want a critical value. Now, same thing. We're doing one tail. It thinks it's a two tail, so we have to click on that. By the way, could we do uh, two times this? Yeah, it doesn't matter whether you do this times two or whatever, comma, and then we get our degrees of freedom. Now, if we hit Control Enter, well, that works just fine. But remember, it's only spitting things out on the upper end. So if we really wanted a critical value on the lower end, we'd have to put a minus in front of it. Now, our calculated test statistic, compare it there. The way you use test statistic and critical value, if the test statistic on the lower end is less than, then you reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. Now, p-value, remember it depends on whether we have a negative t or a positive t. So for a negative t, we're going to have to trick it. We're going to use the fact that the uh, it's only doing, uh, or it, it uh, this value here, I mean, this symmetry here will be applicable up here. So we'll come over here, whoop, equals, and we'll do t for t distribution, dist for the uh, probability we want. Now our x, we have to trick it. So we're going to have to put a minus in front of here, comma, and then the rest of it is the same as uh, we did earlier comma, in our tails, it's 1. So the only thing we did different here is that we had to put a minus in front of it. And so we get 0 0.0017. Now, for uh, that was that situation right there. We used the fact that it's uh, uniform in this side, but then got the probability from here. But what if we had a positive value? Again, it's going to think it wants to calculate this way, but we want to force the issue that way. So we have to come over here. Boop. I have this big picture here, so I'm getting confused when I look down here. All right, so we go equals, and we have to do 1 minus t dist. The dist, the t is for the t distribution. The dist is for the probability. So we get that, comma, degrees of freedom, comma, and the tails is a one tail test. And so that's our probability. That's if we ever did run into the situation where we had some, I did it again. I think I'm uh, sleep videoing right now. So that was a situation where we had some gigantic area we need to calculate there. So that's what to do if it's on the left. Now let's do our last uh, example here. We have a two tail. Now the, it, the t inverse will work just fine because it's always expecting a uh, two tail. So we'll just put alpha in and it will work perfect. Uh, the only thing is if we want to do plus and minus, It'll spit out the plus, but it won't spit out the minus. So we'd have to put a minus in front of it if we wanted it. Then for the p value, it only takes the positive uh, t. So we'll put in a positive t, degrees of freedom. Ah, and it will. Uh, we put in a two, uh, a two here for the two tail. Let's go ahead and calculate this. See if we can. Uh, we have our degrees of freedom, 24. Our alpha, 0.01. Now, we don't even need to calculate alpha divided by 2. Uh, the functions will, uh, t inverse will assume that it is a two-tail test. So we'll say equals t for t distribution inverse, because we're calculating critical value. Probability, 0 0.01 degrees of freedom. That's the easiest one so far. And then enter. So there's our hurdle. Whoops, I have the wrong value there. three point two five. So now if we're comparing these two, this will define the interval plus or minus this. This is outside the interval, so boom, reject the null hypothesis, accept the alternative hypothesis. Now for p value equals 
and we'll do t for uh, t distribution and the dist for the probability. Now, it wants our x. We're going to give it, remember, it'll only deal with positive values, so we put that in there, comma, the degrees of freedom, and then comma, watch this, 2. All we have to do is tell it that it's a 2 tail, and it will spit out the right uh, p value. So there it is, 0 0.034. We compare that to our 0 0.01. 0 0.0034, we compare that to our 0 0.01 much smaller, so similar to the conclusion we came with critical value with p, we also say reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. All right, uh, that's a little bit about the t functions, a lot different than those other functions, but you got a, a nice little cheat sheet right there, and you got an example for each one of uh, the possibilities right here. All right, we'll see you next video.